So hi, hello and welcome again. Mike Rob Hunter here. Well, you can also call me Oliver, of course. <laughs> and today in this video, I want to try something slightly different. I'm not going to give you a tutorial on how to prepare microscope slides, but rather um, I would like to um, yeah, simply answer the question, if I had unlimited resources available, unlimited money, unlimited time, um, what would I do in relation to microscopy? I actually did find uh, three things that I would like to do. Um, yeah, and some of them are kind of trivial, I would say, but then others I think, um, yeah, um, maybe even, even a lot of time and money would not be able to solve. I'm going to share these points, uh, points with you. The first one, let's start off with the easy ones first, is if I had unlimited time and money, I probably <laughs> would invest a little bit more in a better and larger microscope or workspace. Just want to show to you how my work workspace looks like uh, right now, it's a little bit messy. Yeah, sure. If I were to clean it up, then I probably would have a little bit more space. Yeah. Um, so essentially, um, it's not necessarily that uh, the microscope that's the issue, right? Many people think they need to buy the most expensive, the best microscope that they can possibly afford. It, that, that's not even necessary. I mean, I have a pretty good microscope in any case, so I don't want to, <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm not the best standard in that uh, respect. Um, but generally, you can do quite a lot of things already with fairly simple equipment. Um, but you know, having a nice uh, large uh, space, uh, yeah, is is certainly something that I would like uh, to have. Currently, in the room where I am, it's a little bit crowded uh, because there's also the laundry in the background, which you don't see. Yeah, and there's a second computer here that the kids are using. Of course, of course, I've got cupboards here. Yeah, but of course, the camera only has a very limited view, so you don't see all of this mess. Um, yeah. By the way, in case you're wondering, these are basically slime molds uh, that I'm growing right now. Yeah. Yeah. So different video where I put them under the microscope. But that was the first thing, uh, probably one of the, the easier uh, yeah, things uh, to, uh, yeah, to do is would be yeah, essentially investing a little bit more in, um, in my workspace. The second one is a little bit more advanced already. If I basically um, had uh, a lot of time and, and, uh, um, and money available, uh, then I would probably start making a proper documentary movie, a documentary film yeah, about the microscopic world. Yeah, it's something that's been on my agenda already for quite some time. Um, but doing that properly does take a little bit of planning as well. Uh, yeah, by the way, I, I think I did not answer yet. Uh, probably your question is, what is this actually showing over here? Well, that is a uh, an antique microscope slide probably around 100 years old, you can see it here on, on top. Yeah? And this is the cross section of the spine of a sea urchin. So sea urchins, they have those spines or spikes rather, and that's the cross section. And I show it to you not only because it looks beautiful, but actually I have not figured out yet how they actually prepared that specimen. Yeah? And making a documentary um, about the microscopic world and maybe also a little bit about the history of scientific exploration, that's also one of the things that, uh, that's a little bit on my, on my list that I would like to to do. Well, how did people 100 years ago, 200 years ago, how did they do science? Yeah. How did they make the important discoveries uh, nowadays? And for example, uh, simply preparing a beautiful slide like this, this knowledge is, I would say, I don't know, maybe, maybe almost forgotten uh, because uh, it's not easily possible to cut those spines because they are so brittle and fragile. So how did they actually make that? I, I really, I don't know, right? Um, and I also had some problems finding the original literature and uh, doing some research in that respect and maybe making a documentary movie um, yeah, about the microscopic world and microscopic observations and all these things and maybe a little bit of uh, mic microscopy history. That would be something that's the second thing that's a little bit on my list uh, of the things that I would do. And the third thing, yeah, that's I think the biggest one. And uh, yeah, I think uh, also time and money is not able to solve that. But I'm a biology teacher, right? And uh, yeah, I've been teaching biology now for well over 26 years. Yeah, so, and I've been very much into science teaching also in general at the university. I also used to teach physics. I also used to teach chemistry and computer science. Yeah, but biology, of course, is one of those uh, subjects that I really like a lot. Um, However, if I had unlimited resources, I probably would change <laughs> the biology school syllabi around the world. What am I talking about? It's kind of strange maybe if you hear a biology teacher say that, um, but biology lessons can be sometimes a little bit dry and abstract. There is a syllabus to complete. There are exams that have to be passed. And many of the things that we biology teachers teach um, cannot be seen under a microscope. 
Yeah, people figured this out, these things out, uh, yeah, without the use of microscopes, using biochemistry, and I don't know, a variety of other experimental techniques, but not necessarily uh, microscopes. And uh, this means that sometimes biology lessons can be a little bit abstract and, and dry. Yeah? And uh, even though many schools do have microscopes available, and uh, we of course use them, um, I would, if I had uh, unlimited resources, go far further than that. I would restructure uh, the syllabi um, much more around observation of nature. Um, because I think, and that's a little bit also my general criticism, in, is, is that um, I'm kind of a little bit worried that uh, maybe the lessons that uh, we teach in school, and I'm not being self-critical as a teacher, as an educator here, yeah, may sometimes discourage students from actually studying science. Um, yeah, because nature is something beautiful. Look at this, isn't this, aren't these patterns beautiful? Let's zoom in a little bit more here, right? And that's the reason why I started to study biology many years ago, uh, yeah, in the first place, because I was fascinated by the beauty of nature, by the patterns of nature, um, yeah, by the processes of life themselves. And then, uh, and then what do I do in school? Uh, basically, I make drawings of cells on a chalkboard, right? Um, and that's such a far cry and so different uh, from actually this immersive experience that we have um, when actually looking at the things directly under the microscope. Yeah, so this is something that's a little bit, uh, I would say, yeah, utopic maybe, uh, in the sense that, uh, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit difficult to do that. Uh, of course, we try to include uh, microscopes in our education system, obviously, but it's always as a seen as support. Right, uh, so if I talk about the cell, then we pull out the microscope for a couple of minutes and then we look at cells. Um, but there's so many things in nature that really are so fascinating um, and actually quite easy to observe, but we simply don't get to do that, right? Because we have to talk about the biochemistry, we have to talk about uh, uh, cell division stages, we have to talk about all the theoretical stuff, right? Um, and uh, so sometimes uh, there is simply not enough time to simply appreciate the beauty of nature, um, in this case as seen under the microscope. Huh? And uh, if I basically had unlimited resources, then I would change the syllabi um, yeah, um, of, of the biology lessons. Yeah, let's, let's just, just for the fun of it, let's have, a, have another look here. Yeah? Again, that's the spine, uh, the cross section of the spine of a sea urchin. It's made of calcium carbonate, right? And uh, yeah, look. Yeah, look at all those, it looks almost like these are rings here, almost like tree rings as the spine grows. I suppose that more and more layers are deposited on the outside. Yeah, I just wanted to share these ideas with you. Um, and uh, what I intend to do from now on um, um, as well is, is um, I do not only want to show you some microscopic techniques uh, and, and specimens under the microscope, but I also would like to talk a little bit about some, some other related aspects, broader topics that relate to science and specifically biology and microscopy as well. Yeah, we're going to see how this actually works and whether um, you actually like these videos as well. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that for today. I would like to, of course, encourage you to, um, to to write your own opinions and comments uh, yeah, in, in, in the comments section below. And uh, yes, all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you in the next video. Bye bye.